Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's event which has been organised and is going to be moderated by Elena Kainska, who is um, a Ukrainian artist who has been with the festivals for a few years now and um, we're really interested to listen to this roundtable discussion that she has organised. So I'm going to pass straight on over to Elena. Hi Sarah Jane, hi everybody. I'm really, really proud to be the part of Lacuna Festival for third year in a row, not only as a participant of the exhibition, like an exhibiting artist, but also as organizer of the panel discussions. And uh, they really seem to be, our discussions really seem to be very insightful. I uh, remember the first year, the discussion was uh, about art and mental health, our the first, first one. It was a COVID era and uh, this topic was really very very uh, in time and uh, the last year we made the discussion with Ukrainian artists who decided to stay in Ukraine and continue their art practice in the in the conditions of the war and uh, this year we invited displaced Ukrainian artists who continue their art practice and uh, what's interesting and what we are going to discuss is that we want to hear the stories of all of you, the displaced Ukrainian artists who have lost their homes due to the war in Ukraine, who have migrated and continue their art practice. And we will explore how the loss of home has influenced your artistic practice. And this, this panel will feature several Ukrainian artists who will share their professional experiences of displacement and how this has impacted their art practice. And I would love you to tell us about the challenges you face as a result of displacement, about the difficulties you have about finding a new place to work, finding a new studio, finding new artist opportunities on the new places, finding new colleagues, and as well as emotional difficulties and of living behind your homes and communities and uh, I would love to hear your direct experience and about the how your art practice changed due to the migration or in a response to the new environment I mean uh, do you feel like your art practice has evolved or did it stop or did it face some difficulties you couldn't overcome or how your feelings and emotional state also impact your uh, art practice. And uh, by this panel discussion, we hope to encourage greater awareness and understanding of the human cost of conflict and displacement, as well as the role of art in healing and resilience. And uh, for our first speaker, I would love to introduce Marina Naumchuk, I will tell a few words about the artist and then I will give her the words. I will give her the words. And uh, Marina Noumchuk is an artist who works in various areas of art, such as art textiles, modern painting, collage, and performance. PhD student of the Lviv National Academy of Arts, where she studies contemporary textile art in an inter interdisciplinary field. The areas of interest include the, the search for connections and mutual influences of various forms of art, visual, and dynamics. In addition to her own solo project, the artist participates in various group exhibitions and a number of artistic residencies in Ukraine and abroad. With the beginning of the war, together with her little daughter, she moved to Poland, where she stayed for a year. Marina, I would love to invite you to tell us your story. Uh, please remember you have approximately five minutes of your speech, and then we will have the possibility to ask you some questions. Please. Uh, hello, everyone. First, uh, it, it, it Okay, with the sound, do you hear me? No, no, I don't know. We I mean, can hear okay. you, you're a little bit muffled. Uh -huh. uh, I will try. Uh, this is better. <laughs> Aha, this is a lot better, yes, thank you. Yes, I switch off my phone. Sorry, it's my daughter on the... You can hear. Sorry, maybe 
someone else will start because uh, I really need to go to my daughter. Okay, uh, okay, just have just have your time. Then uh, I will invite then to speak uh, Mashika Vashetska, and uh, we'll tell also she is an artist originally from Bakhmut, and now she lives in Ivan from Kivsk. Since the beginning of the full scale invasion, she has been covering the stories of people from the front line and occupied territories, stories of volunteers, important events, and historical victories of Ukrainians. In Ivan from Kivsk, Mashika has an art studio and community with whom we are in, uh, they are engaged in creative reflections through various artistic techniques. The artist loves new cities, photography, and comics writes poetry and blog about her life. Mashika, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, hello, good evening. Um, uh, I brought it. I take part uh, of this festival. Um, since, uh, since the beginning of war, I um, live one uh, half year uh, in Germany. And uh, my practice a little bit changed because I can't um, concentrate a lot of time. Um, during the first year of uh, work, uh, I created a series of illustrations about people who stay in the front line or in the occupation. Mm. Then I tried to return to my routine art practice and uh, old uh, art projects, but uh, uh, the same terms, um, uh, different, a uh, little bit change um, because of war. Uh, for example, my um, serious uh, reality adaptation, uh, it's um, uh, become um, uh, document of the time. Uh, um, a lot of cities uh, not exist anymore uh, that I um, joined uh, during 2020s and 20, uh, 21st year. Um, uh, now um, I create a uh, portrait of uh, people uh, of uh, full hate. Um, and um, it's uh, mostly it's uh, women. Uh, they come to my uh, atelier and uh, uh, tell me their uh, stories, and uh, I draw in, uh, it uh, on the portrait. Um, also, also I start in uh, create a lot of collages uh, because I find um, many books on the street in the Germany. Mm. And um, I um, teach people uh, creating collages. I have a um, um, series of workshops in, in my atelier for young people. We create in collages uh, all together. Mm. I think it's uh, all. Hey, Mashika, thank you so much for your presentation. Does anyone have some questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. then then, then uh, I would love us to move to the next participant. It's uh, Vitaly Matuchno. He is an artist, curator, and musician from Lysychansk, Luhansk region. Uh, Vitaly is the founder of the project Halareya Dirosh and 14822. Uh, he works with analog and digital photography, mixed media, sound design, and digital collage. Vitaly, please uh, come to tell your story. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Vitaly. Currently, I'm staying in Lviv, but uh, well, most biggest part of my life I spent in my hometown in Lysychansk. And uh, for me, the most important things um, in, in there was to stay in a place and work with the local communities and so on. Um, I kind of long time ago. I kind of decided that for me, art and culture will be some kind of tools of change things around me. And uh, it was really helped back then uh, to 
change at least something because uh, Donbas it's not an uh, easy place to live. It's always kind of troublesome. And as, uh, like remembering back, back there when I started all of this, um, my organization and other cultural in initiatives, it was like uh, the war in our region was going for six years by that point. And uh, it was kind of impossible to understand what's going to be next. But of course, uh, I don't think we ever <laughs> considered that full scale war really began at some point. And uh, I was, uh, for me, it was important to kind of work inside and uh, uh, to develop my hometown, to develop culture in this place around me, and so on and so on. When the full scale war began, I uh, left the city on the first day because I'm, I can understand it that it's not going to be the way when the war in Ukraine started, like uh, nine years ago. It's not going to be so local. It's not going to be that um, long and uh, strange. It's going to be more destructive. Uh, so I guess I left... Uh, uh, my hometown with only one backpack and uh, with my girlfriend. Uh, right now we live in Lviv for a uh, uh, year and a half. Uh, I guess I'm going to be staying for here for some time at least. Maybe till the end of full-scale war, but it's hard to tell. Uh, but in Lviv we continue our work and... Um, uh, it's kind of not the, the thing that we have used to do uh, because it's mostly uh, working outside of our region is became kind of differently because right now we can't work kind of directly with uh, the team of Donbass and right now mostly that we can work right now it's on the memories about this place because uh, Luhansk region is mostly right now destroyed, uh, some part of Donetsk regions and so on and so on. In Lviv we continue our work that, uh, yeah, we kind of continue to work with the team of Donbass. We continue to make some, um, you can call it kind of like um, learning projects about Donbass because I kind of try trying to tell what what the Donbass was like before the full scale war to the people in Lviv in the different regions of Ukraine and so on. Um, but it's kind of different because uh, in some way it's the thing that I never wanted to do because for me it was mostly important to work inside uh, of a region and not kind of leave it. Uh, and. Uh, because of that, uh, because of relocation, we, I have personally some uh, dissonance with things that I want to do and the things maybe that I can do right now. Um, even uh, even with photography, for, for me, uh, uh, it was always important to kind of capture the image of my city, of my region, uh, and show it to kind of bigger uh, to the bigger world and show the thing that I have seen there uh, because it was kind of obscure region. Nobody really knows about it. A lot of uh, speculation about a lot of um, stigmatization of Donbass uh, region and the people who live there. Uh, so for me, it was important to work with this thing also. Uh, but as a photographer, of course, I cannot really kind of go there and make photos there right now, especially in my hometown, since it's occupied it. Uh, so kind of right now, life's, life is kind of in some kind of um, uh, hanging position. I don't really know what's going to be next. It's really hard to plan. Uh, nobody knows, uh, actually, but uh, it's not... Uh, well, it's not the reason to not do anything either. <clears throat> so we kind of continue our works uh, and we're making exhibitions and so on and so on. As the first year in Lviv for me was really uh, a lot of work. <laughs> right now I kind of in some kind of 
you can say I'm resting for a little bit, but it's gonna it's gonna end soon <laughs> too. I guess I'm done. Okay, Vitaly, thank you so much for your presentation. And it was really very interesting to hear. Uh, does anyone have some questions probably to Vitaly and his uh, story? Uh, okay, then maybe Marina is ready to speak now. What do you think? Is it, uh, is it now comfortable yeah, for you? Thank you. Yes, uh, sorry for interruption. No, it's uh, fine. With the beginning uh, of war, I took my daughter because I have a small daughter. She is two years, so we just left uh, Lviv because at that time it was also dangerous. Uh, it's still, but uh, now we came back. We we were in Poland for a year, and for me, as I work with textile and uh, with textile material, for me it was a real challenge because. Um, uh, I, I couldn't uh, react uh, for the first, uh, I think, three months uh, to uh, the whole uh, the whole news and everything. I just was, because I, I saw like uh, other, uh, other artists, they started to work and to react to everything. And for me, it was just uh, such a big calmness and uh, it was uh, such stagnation. And uh, of course, um, uh it's it's also very uh, it was difficult that uh, we changed place and uh, um at first i even uh, i didn't have just my tools <laughs> uh, um, and later i organized a place for me uh, for working and what was uh, good um, a lot of uh, support from poland and uh, there was different programs uh, which uh, helped me to start uh, doing something and um, the real challenge for me it was <laughs> the material because at home uh, i have everything i have threads i have fabrics i have second hand uh, i have money <laughs> to to um, buy everything what i need and to make something uh, and uh, in poland and you can experiment at home because you have everything and when you are not at home you just need to do something else with uh, such materials which are uh, um, which <laughs> which you can get and, and uh, for me I started embroidering uh, embroidery and also um, I, I had the possibility to teach um, Ukrainian embroidery uh, Ukrainian embroidery in Poland for for uh, for Polish people and it was also such a possibility to um, give my uh, experience and to give my view uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, what was sorry uh, so um, really the first time it was uh, difficult but this support or uh, from the world uh, and from uh, Polish friends for me it was very important and what was for me uh, okay for Uh, took my path like uh, textile and performance uh, should be connected for me with it and in Poland in Lodz I have this possibility had this possibility because it's very textile uh, city so I can uh, I managed to put it in the, um, uh, the textile art community there and to show like art textile but Ukrainian and Ukrainian view or on on all what happens uh, and uh, I can talk about war but if we are talking about um, how is it okay to be dislocated to be uh, not in your place of course it's 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 awful and I uh, when it's uh, like now uh, I'm at home and I can I see like my pre art practice is different uh, there and here here I uh, I have my table, I have all my fabrics and I can do, I can experiment and I can express myself, which I can't do in, uh, in, uh, in other situation. But still, I think that 
artists who manage to do it and who, who still are talking, speaking and showing uh, all this and uh, doing it from the very beginning, uh, I think it's huge. And uh, uh, I really admire <laughs> these artists who uh, from the very beginning uh, started uh, speaking about war and showing it. And um, for me, it's a, a little bit um, hard because uh, textile needs time and I I couldn't be so fast <laughs> in showing and um, just uh, spreading other artists is also important so um, this is my view and my my story and of course the Thank you. small daughter is also the challenge <laughs> and, <I can> imagine. <laughs> so yeah Thank you. Thank you, Marina, for sharing this with us. Is, does anyone has some questions to Marina? I have a question, actually, if that's OK. Um, I'm really interested in how this feels for you as a creative to have had this block imposed on your practice. Uh what is the question <laughs> how it how it felt or how it feels uh, mm, uh, I, I really don't get what what <laughs> what exactly uh Olena, did you understand uh, i mean how 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 it feels uh, well what uh, as if i understood it right like what, what kind of emotions you have when you have obstacles of the kind you uh described of that impossibility to create uh, at full scale when you don't have all the proper materials and your table and your tools um, if if i understood the question right Exactly this, Elena. Thank you for uh, explaining it a bit clearer. Uh, okay, it's like you have. Uh, I had two emotions. Uh, one, it was like, okay, I should, uh, I should find something else, uh, something uh, which is here, which I can use, which uh, how how I can express. And on the other hand, it was like opposite. Oh my God, I can't do what. Uh, for example, I have an image in my head, and I want to do it in another way and it's like you have an idea uh, and first idea is usually for me it's usually with that materials which i usually use and then you understand okay i can't use it uh, so i need to find another way and it was like uh, tricky uh, on the one hand it's like a challenge which you uh, ready to make and uh, on the other hand it's like frustration because you can't do it uh, on your own way so like yeah that's interesting and also i have a very i think short question so in your experience in poland is, does your uh, friends artists like people who are coming to your exhibition that they really feel just uh fair and deepest uh i don't know strong uh, fear. fear yeah in your in your, uh, in your works because like i have my own experience here and like i'm interesting is it the same or no like does they understand like totally the situation is you create uh yeah, it was different because it also depends on works. Because, uh, for example, uh, some um, first uh, I usually stand on the position of um, uh, like aesthetic. It's for me, it's very important. So, if uh, for example, um, aesthetic was more than like um, um, on its vision, vision of aesthetic was more like it was embroidery. It's always like oh, it's like it's. Um, a craft it's a lot of work and usually it's, it's the first emotion but for example in performance it's usually the poor emotion and people people usually look like oh my god someone crying and it was uh, more powerful like uh, than something else but um uh, i must say that other works which are not like um so strong at first they are usually like uh, also have this uh, usually, um, people thought about them later and it also 
it's like postponed answer and postponed emotions. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, people are really um, are connected with this and felt this. And uh, so, yes, uh, but uh, also there, are, if it's art people, they usually feel it. But um, like ordinary people, it's um, <laughs> I'm not, not ordinary, but I, I, I mean, but like it's performance. Uh, there uh, it could be some some other people like from the street. They are not con connected with art uh, every day, so they uh, for them it was like um, different. I, I think it's different, and sometimes it's not like um, there weren't such connection with the. Um, with our situation so so for me it's like depends thanks thank you thanks thank, th thank you so much and uh, if we are talking about performance i would like to invite uh, another performance artist roxolana ogrenyuk uh, to speak roxolana works with performance video graphics and ready-made and the main themes she explores are generation trauma uh, collective responsibility death and the passage of time roxolana moved to vancouver in uh, 2020 uh, roxolana would you like to take a word uh yeah i wish so first of all uh, i would just say i have such a different experience that i guess all people in this chat because i moved to vancouver to canada in 2020 and uh, we moved because of our family situation and uh, in uh, <laughs> I understand immigration in a different way. We moved because it was our decision. And even then, it was so hard. So hard to understand this, like people outside, culture different, routine, everything, you need to start from zero. So I honestly, I can't imagine how the people moved to the, from Ukraine in this, because of war, because it's much harder than, than what I had. So what I want to say about my like art practice, uh, when I moved to Canada, I, I couldn't do anything, I guess, first one and a half year, because um, it was like very hard to get like this people, this place and this culture. It's much different, I guess, it's much different than Europe, because these people are not, like they're not deep, honestly. And they, they, they didn't felt so, I don't know, more emotion and so on. Uh, so I did, and also I, I wasn't connected with Ukrainian diaspora here before the war. And the, when the war was start, like active war, uh, I found a lot of Ukrainian people here. And first feeling was just guilty guilty that we are here and we couldn't help in Ukraine. And we start uh, help people here because, you know, Canada opened this program, like QED program, and uh, people can apply for visa and came to Canada for free to uh, for three years. And uh, we start uh, to help these newcomers uh, in like first, first newcomers because in like when I was volunteering, there was a families who came with the children and thirty dollars in 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 a package. That's all. And in Canada, it's nothing. So in that moment, we couldn't talk about art. The first thing was that we must help people, and we donate money. We help newcomers, like everything. We create different like information platform, like in a website. Forever, just to help them understand this this life because it's much different. There is no, um, there wasn't any government support in that time in the first, I guess, six months. So everything was depend of Ukrainian diaspora here. After that, it was easy because they opened one more and one more program. So now it's much easier than in the first six months. Um, 
what else um uh in my like i thought about art all this time like what i'm doing and can i do anything here because for me very important is honest when you do something even performance or graphic whatever it's it must be honest and i understood that i can talk about the boar like directly because i didn't have this experience and uh, when the people here i don't know drawing the boar or whatever like they didn't see that for me this is not true so i i didn't like i didn't do anything about the war i uh, do two performances uh, with ukrainian diaspora in the with different uh, topics of the first was, was uh, Holodomor last fall and the second one was about people who came and people uh, here and people uh, who changed their life because of war. So it was honest for me and that's why I did it. Uh, what else? Um, I can't, uh, now I understand like uh, for now, uh, the first important thing, now I work in school, like a settlement worker, and I uh, directly connect with newcomers who came to Canada and uh, help them to settle here in Vancouver. And uh, for me, this is, yeah, this is a job, but also this is a good experience to see these people, because in other way, there is no chance, like, yeah, I can saw them somewhere, I don't know, in rally or, I don't know, somewhere in meeting with them, but this is not such a, um, I don't know, good connection when they come to you and ask how. So this one year in school, it was the big experience, uh, which I use now in my work. And uh, the last one was about um this feeling uh, you know this culture in this continent like hi how are you it's very common and traditional and people usually ask it just because they it's 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 just a culture they didn't even i don't know they they didn't interest how we're doing it really and that was about uh my work last last it was two video um also, what I uh, want to say, uh, I I had a few dialogues with a local artists, like performance artists, and uh, most of them were uh, from Iraq or Syria or Lebanese or this uh, this this country with a war. And how we dis discussed, I understood that they feeling in the same way like Ukrainians now. So not Canadian, like original Canadian. They, they didn't get it. Like they, they, they say, yeah, 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 we understand. We are so sorry about that, blah, blah. But our experience understood just that people who have the same experience. And for me, it was a big surprise because like, oh my God, really people here, they try help. But if we talk about honest, about real feeling, they they didn't get it so i don't know this is my experience about like my my art art uh, here <laughs> i don't know maybe some uh, actually, uh, thank you, Roxolana, for your story. Actually, I have a question. And you told that after after you arrived uh, in Canada, it was the first six months that you couldn't work in the fields of art. And how? what was the feeling that when you understood that uh, the art is open for you again, that you can create again, that this burden is already behind? Uh, it's a maybe good something question. happened, maybe some event happened, maybe something changed in you. What was that? Uh, I guess the first is that my first work here is work in the part of a uh, land art festival in Ukraine. Because of COVID, every, everyone doing it somewhere, I don't know, in Ukraine, in the small villages, etc. So I try to find the place here to to talk with the nature, like how I'm feeling. And it was, 
the, it's very interesting like uh, project because I found the tree who was fault and li lie on a on a on a pill and but it looks like it's just it's real but because of roots was in a ver vertical thing and the 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 tree was like this so i i lie on this tree and put my my leg on the root and i make the photos so it's it was like um just something changing it's like a glitch in the system because you looks like you're staying near the tree but honestly you're li lay on the tree and in it was very good uh, for me. It was very good um, reflection for my like my life there. Uh, like okay, I'm here. Uh, it looks like I'm here, but I'm not. So it was the first thing. After that, I understood like okay, I I like I feel like this. So I'm not ready to do something. And next, my project was with the Ukrainian diaspora. Uh, and it was uh, about Holocaust. So it wasn't about the Canadian culture or Canadian place. Everything. Thank you. Does anyone have some questions to Ruxolana? Uh, so, uh, so this project which uh, you have made, uh, they were with Ukrainian diasporas, but uh, they were for Ukrainians, but uh, or Canadians also were maybe not involved, but there were viewers and how they react if there were viewers. Uh, honestly, just the one person who really got it, it was a woman who, prese uh, who present uh, um, indigenous culture. So indigenous people, it's like I don't know. It's a, and we were, everyone knows the story that the, um, North America uh, doesn't have like European people a uh, long time. So it's very very young countries here. And before this European culture come, there is uh, there is a lot of people like indigenous people. And when the European come, they 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 did genocide for them. They killed them. They, they, it was a terrible story about this territory. And they now it looks like they tried to like fix this problem. They tried to uh, advertise uh, indigenous culture, but it doesn't look real. Like it's like a, I don't know, it's, it, it looks cheap for me mm -hmm. because it's, it's like, they talk, oh, we support like indigenous people, but honestly, no one knows the story. Like, this is this is not honest. And uh, just as this person came to me after this performance, and because all the Canadians like, just come and look and go, 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 go there, like, yeah, they, they didn't ask questions, but this is just one person who has the same experience as uh, her. Uh, culture, she came and said, you know, I understand what you mean. It was so deep. Yeah. I, I think this moment was worse, that you understood that performance was worth doing, even if one person understands it to the very depths of what you, what the very sense you put inside of it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, I would like to invite our next speaker. Uh, she is Maria Kozarenko. Uh, she's an artist and writer from Kharkiv. Uh, she works mainly in the neo-naive genre. She is the author of Ukrainian Hieroglyphs Art Project. And since March 2022, she has been living in France where she continues to work as an artist. And Maria, please share your story with us. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, I would like to introduce myself in Ukrainian. It's okay, Olena? Yeah, I will help you. Okay. Я буду коротко. Я переїхала до Франції разом зі своїм сином. Ми виїхали з дому 7 березня. I moved to France to get... 
I moved to France together with my son and we moved uh, out of our house on uh, 7 March, uh, the very beginning of the war. І я опускаю нашу подорож через Польщу до Франції і випадковості, які привели мене сюди, я просто скажу, що це не був план, це просто випадок, що я опинилась тут. Uh, I will not tell uh, the, the peculiarities of our trip through Poland to France, and I didn't intend to go to France. There were some coincidences that lead us there. І я би хотіла зупинитись на просто трьох моментах, які, мені здається, найважливіші в досвіді бути художником не вдома. Uh, I would like to highlight the three moments, the most important, important, as I think, of being an artist not at your home. Найперше, я думаю, що це спільне для всіх українських художників, які залишились в Україні і які виїхали, це те, що в горах стало дуже багато дому. Де стало багато дому? Тема дому. Так, дім. Uh, the first one is what is common for all Ukrainian artists of both who stayed in Ukraine and who left Ukraine is that there now there is a lot of home in their works. Ми всі намагаємось в своєму мистецтві так чи інакше знайти, збудувати собі новий дім, витворити його в своєму in all uh, our art, all of us in this or that way try to find or build or to create a new home for us. Друге, здається, це сказала Роксолана, і тут я би хотіла додати, вона сказала, що не уявляє, як це починати з нуля. Я можу зараз помолитись, можливо, не вона виправте, якщо не так. Що люди починають з нуля. Так от... Перебуваючи тут, я зрозуміла, що це не так. Ми не починаємо з нуля. Ми, як біженці, так і люди, які вимушені були виїхати, ми починаємо з глибоких мінусів, насправді, в новому місці. Uh, the second question, the second thing I want to tell is, was mentioned by Roxolana first. If, I'm, if, I, if, if, if it was not Roxolana, please correct me. Uh, this was about the notion that after displacement, we all start from scratch, from zero. So I want to tell that we don't start from, from zero. We start from a very deep minuses. И... Хтось, можливо, вже вийшов в нуль, хтось досі намагається в нього вийти, хтось вже в плюсах, ну, але це, це набагато драматичніший процес, ніж просто типу, ми все починаємо з нуля. So somebody remains in minuses, somebody now reaches zero, somebody has some pluses, but this process is much more dramatic than we could even imagine. Дру, другий, чи, чи вже Власне, третій, мабуть, момент особисто для мене дуже важливий і актуальний. І коли ти потрапляєш в нове місце, люди тебе починають підтримувати. Ну, бо це така солідарність, вона існує. And the third moment is very important for me personally that when you come to the new place, people start supporting you. І найперше, то тобі починають допомагати, і ти радо приймаєш цю першу допомогу. Ну, як мені, наприклад, місцеві художники, асоціації допомагали з матеріалом, надавали місце в своїй колективній студії, де я могла працювати. І ця перша допомога, вона дуже важлива. Ти, почина... ну, ти е, пиняєшся на новому місці, у тебе немає нічого, навіть, грубо кажучи, власного одягу, і не те, що матеріалів. Оце так було для мене. І це дуже важливо, це дуже приємно, оця перша допомога. Uh, the first thing is that uh, I want to tell about the initial help and support you receive after arriving to the new place, because uh, you come having absolutely nothing, not even clothes, you don't have any art materials. And for me, the local community of the artists, they helped me with the materials and uh, the common studio place. And this uh, initial help was very, very important because really I had nothing. Але потім настає другий етап. Then the comes. 
Так. І тут починається цікаво. Бо е, так званий синдром самозванця, він починає працювати, ну це так було для мене, це особистий досвід, він починає працювати настільки потужно проти тебе, і він е, посилюється і поглиблюється відчуттям того, що, добре, мене запросили на виставку, мене запросили туди, мені влаштовують те-те-те-те, тому що я, як митець, чогось варта, або це просто вияв солідарності з українцями. Then a very interesting thing starts starts to happen. This is called the fraud syndrome. And this fraud syndrome becomes very deep and very strong because the person starts to think that uh, he or she was invited for the exhibition or invited to some event or some thing, uh, not because uh, they are good as an artist, but because this is the gesture of solidarity with Ukrainians. Yeah. Я з цим досі не, я досі не можу це побороти. Тобто, чим далі, тим це, це поглиблюється. Я вже тут скоро півтора роки у Франції, і ця ситуація зберігається. Тобто, ти не знаєш, ти просто достойний цього місця на виставці в галереї чи десь ще. Чи це просто тобі так от, ти просто бідний український біженець, тобі допомагають. І це... І це жахливе відчуття насправді. And I'm here for almost one year and a half, and I still have this feeling, and this feeling becomes deeper and stronger. For now, still I don't know if I'm really decent this place in the gallery or this place on the art exhibition, or they take me only as a pure Ukrainian refugee. І, власне, із цього випливає наступний момент, що і потім я переходжу на той етап, коли я просто намагаюся заявити про себе просто як представника, представницю українського мистецтва. І, і прошу, просто це в ручному режимі мені доводиться робити, будь ласка, не оголошуйте мене художниця біженка з України. Будь ласка, не пишіть про мене в каталозі художниця так само там біженка. Просто напишіть художниця з України. Не треба ліпити до мене цей ярлик щоразу, бо ну, це зовсім не допомагає. Це, ну, це принизливо. Це принизливо бути не просто художником, якщо вже на те пішло. Коли я приходжу по наприклад, якусь соціальну допомогу в службу державну, так, я в своєму статусі, я мама, в мене, наприклад, немає там роботи, в мене немає того, сього, мені ніде жити, так, це одне, але коли я приходжу на виставку, або ви мене запрошуєте кудись, то я хочу бути просто художницею. And the next moment come from the insights I told you before. This is a moment when uh, everyone uh, who invites me for the exhibition present me as a Ukrainian refugee artist, that I'm a refugee. And I ask them not to do so. I ask them to only say I'm an artist from Ukraine because I want to present my artworks as a part of Ukrainian art scene. I don't want to be presented as a refugee. And this uh, this label refugee is very offensive and it sticks to the person very very strongly and of course when i come to receive some social help and uh, i'm in that status of the refugee because uh, i'm a mother i'm i have no home i have no work and salary but when i uh, am at the exhibition i want to be presented as a ukrainian artist not as a ukrainian refugee Власне, це такі основні, основні моменти мого досвіду. Ну, вийшло так, що я розказала про, про все погане. Uh, these are the main points of my experience, and it turned out that I told only about the negative things. Але насправді за цей рік з хвостиком було багато прекрасного досвіду, нових знайомств, um, викликів, які я успішно. Здолала, тому... 
but uh, of it's course fun. this uh, this this year and a half was full of beautiful things and new acquaintances and new experiences new challenges i overcome uh, successfully Ну, про хороше, як правило, я просто пишу в Фейсбуці, і там можна побачити всі, на, всі отримані нагороди, всі проведені виставки і так далі, і так далі, і так далі. Ну, тут, мені здається, ми зібралися трохи не про те поговорити, а поговорити про крас. Якраз про те, що нас хвилює. Uh, about the good things I write on my Facebook page about all, all the awards and exhibitions, but I think that here today we uh, are here to uh, coll collect it all together, not to spe speak about the beautiful things, but about the challenges we face. Thank you for the translation, Elena. <laughs> Uh, Maria, uh, thank you so much for your, so you, you spoke so frankly, so openly, it touched me very, very deeply, and uh, the words you speak, they really resonate uh, very loudly in my heart now. You're welcome. Марина, Марина, Саня, та, бо ну, я чула, що у Франції от від художників, що дуже залучені, в них лишаються і російські художники до мистецьких подій. Ну, тобто, наприклад, в Польщі, то я взагалі не перетиналася з російськими художниками, якщо раніше там якийсь був фестиваль, і там російська культура позиціонувалася як одна з частин, то, то з війною все, тобто про це всі мовчать, і таких ну, митців немає. А, а чи ти стикалася з таким, і, ну, як взагалі суспільство, чи, чи воно різниться просто від ком'юніті до ком'юніті? Uh, I will translate the question first. Uh, I heard that in France uh, the Russian artists are involved in the art scene because uh, because I didn't met any Russian artists in Poland since the beginning of the war, but I heard the situation in France is different. Did you met any Russian artists there? Мені пощастило жити в провінції, такі глибокі це рівно центр Франції, місто називається Клермон-Ферран. І більшість людей в Україні не лише, я думаю, навіть не чули про це місто, хоча воно є адміністративним центром регіону Оверн. Uh, I was lucky to live in a province. This is the city Clairon Ferran, and the majority of people didn't even hear about this place, but this place is the administrative center. І саме з російськими митцями я тут ніколи не перетиналася. Але в мене було два моменти, коли виникали російські музиканти. І перша історія, вона стосувалася мене безпосередньо, бо організатори виставки якось запропонували мені зробити відкриття разом з типу українським музикантом. So I didn't meet any Russian artists, but there were two different moments. On the first moment, uh, I was uh, I met Russian musicians. The organizations of the exhibition asked me to make an opening of the exhibition with a so-called Ukrainian uh, musician. І коли я попросила, ну, розкажіть мені про нього, дайте мені якісь посилання. Мені назвали його ім'я, я загуглила, і це виявився просто ну, стовідсотково російський музикант, без жодного натяку на Україну. Тобто в нього, він з Росії, народився, виріс в Росії. В нього музичний гурт, який він тут створив у Франції, в нього, в нього така назва типу Париж-Москва, ну такого плану, я вже не пам'ятаю точно. Ну, тобто дуже красномовець. І нічого дотичного до України в цього музиканта немає. Коли я спитала, а чого ви вирішили, що він українець, організатори інсузами сказали, ну, в резюме написав, що він теж брати Сам Це був реально самозванець, який ледь не вліз в цю історію. І я їх попередила, що не треба цього робити, і це все неправда. 
От, але я знаю, що потім вони все одно влаштували йому окремий концерт. Тобто це їх не зупинило. Uh, the story was that uh, that I heard about this Ukrainian artist and I asked his name and then I Google it and I found out that this person is 100% Russian, born and raised in Russia and the name of the his band was something like Paris and Moscow, something like that, like he's very, very Russian. And I asked the organizers of the exhibition not to do this and so we didn't met at the exhibition but as far as I know they still organize a separate concert for him so the the thing that he is russian didn't stop them from cooperation тобто на мою думку більшість французів намагаються зайняти таку позицію ну типу ми підтримуємо українців бо їх шкода але ми намагаємося при цьому не образити росіян нічим за за позицію максимально нейтральна позиція The position of the majority of French people is maximally neutral. So they try to support Ukrainians because they feel pity for the Ukraine, but they try not to offend Russians in any way. Зруб мен був теж пов'язаний з музикантами, і це просто, це мене безпосередньо не стосувалося, але один поважний місцевий музичний фестиваль зробив хедлайнером своєї програми музичний гурт. Це француз і росіянка. Ну, вони вже разом живуть і працюють у Франції дуже довго, близько 20 років, але вони продовжують гастролювати в Росії. Вони гастролювали в Росії після початку повномасштабного вторгнення, виступали там десь. Uh, the second moment was not uh, was not connected with me personally, but I found out uh, that и, that тобто, one... нічого, нікого не Uh, the second one was about a very famous uh, local musical festival because they made one band a headliner of their festival. That band consisted of the French men and Russian women. And this couple uh, live and work in France for 20 years, but they go with concert to Russia. And I know for sure they were in Russia with concert after the full scale invasion of Russia to Ukraine. And nobody is uh, in France is concerned about this fact. В Парижі, в Ліоні, хоча б там Марсель, Ніца і так далі. Ну, ті відомі місця, де багато росіян було завжди, я думаю, досі так і є. Але такі показові моменти щодо музикантів були. Uh, in Paris, Lyon, and Nizza, and many other famous places, there are a lot of Russians. They were there, they are there, and they will be there. But these moments with uh, music festivals are very, very highlighted. Okay, does, does anyone have some more questions? Okay, then, uh, Maria, thank you so much. Uh, the presentation was really very deep and touching. And uh, it's yeah. great when the person is not afraid to reveal this inner vulnerability and to show this real challenges. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I invite uh, our next speaker. Uh, this is uh, one moment, Nina Kulik. Uh, 
Before the war, she created vivid, emotional, energetic paintings to immerse people in the creativity of life. It was a journey inside herself, a deep immersion to reveal uh, her resourcefulness. And her paintings were created in a meditative state filled with emotional experience that she poured onto the canvas. You know, Nina is a free spirit person who always sees the beautiful and magical things around her, but now everything has changed. Nina, would you share your story with us? Uh, hi, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I want to uh, say uh, sorry, my English is not perfect, but uh, I'm trying, okay? <laughs> yes, uh, are you listening to me? Elena, I don't listen to you. We, we hear you, it's fine. Uh, please go okay. on, please continue. Okay, super. Uh, when start uh, a war, uh, my husband went to serve uh, in the armed force of Ukraine and uh, we um, uh, decided to uh, uh, go away with my daughter. I take my daughter and we go to my friend uh, uh, in Spain and uh, uh, it was very interesting travel. But uh, we um, stay in uh, uh, very beautiful places. We stay in Paradise Island. Uh, uh, it was Menorca. Uh, it's a little island, but it's really paradise. And uh, uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience for me because it was first time when I was I uh, go out from Ukraine. Uh, uh, I go abroad, uh, go abroad uh, from uh, Ukraine with my daughter. And uh, uh, first time uh, uh, from when we uh, was uh, uh, in Spain, uh, we work uh, about a uh, documentary film. Uh, we uh, did uh, we, we talk about uh, memories, stories, and the reflection uh, of from uh, refugees. And it was interesting, but uh, so hard work. Mm. And also during this time, we adapted to a new place, uh, organize, organized our life, uh, covered the basic needs and uh, tried to continue living. And uh, my daughter uh, every day saw a beautiful uh, and magic Mediter Mediterranean uh, life. She uh, had a lot of friends and uh, uh, she was so, so uh, happy. And uh, uh, every evening, every night, she says to me, Mom, it was the best uh, days of my life, day of my life. Uh, I'm so, so happy. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but I am, uh, but what about me? It was um, opposite situation. Uh, I was uh, um, in so deep uh, depression. Uh, uh, I uh, think in all time about dangerous uh, my family and my friends who uh, relatives uh, or who who uh, stay in Ukraine and uh, uh, I am worried I am nervous uh, and uh, uh, cried not all time but uh, I feel this uh, I feel this all time and uh, uh, it was uh, it was from uh, t 10 months it was from 10 months uh, i lived uh, in a very beautiful place it uh, looks like a, a magic life uh, it's not uh, it was not ukraine yes we uh, never listen uh, explosion and uh, uh, don't uh, listen uh, listen alarm but uh, in hard in my heart uh, I was all time uh, uh, with war. War was uh, inside me. And uh, um, also inside me was pain. It was very, very deep uh, pain. It was a lot, so, so many pain. And uh, uh, it was uh, why I am stop, stopped uh, painting. I can't uh, take uh, acryl and uh, uh, take, I can take a canvas and uh, work uh, uh, with colors. And uh, uh, I don't want to create, uh, uh, in, in that time I don't, don't want to cre create uh, because I feel only pain and uh, uh, I don't want to create more pain in this world because I uh, create from uh, my soul, yes, from, from inside me. Uh, and uh, uh, 
I now uh, I have a completely completely uh, creative blog, and uh, I don't draw uh, nothing. <laughs> I don't draw at all. Yes, and uh, now when I'm returned to Ukraine, I returned uh, two months ago. Uh, I uh, feel uh, here. I feel better, but um, but I can't. I can't uh, take uh, a brush and try to do something. I feel uh, now I feel this pain and uh, all uh, experience uh, uh, from last year. Um, I can't uh, continue uh, to do uh, something. Maybe it's only now, but and I hope uh, I started to do. Uh, something with uh, uh, color and uh, something creative, but now I can do this. It's my story about uh, about art uh, from last year, one and a half year. Uh, I'm really grateful to hear all your stories today. Uh, mm -hmm. And Nina's story, uh, the stories of all of us are different, and uh, the stories of the story of Nina is uh, different from all other stories we heard today. And uh, Nina, do you think that somehow when you are back to Ukraine, that maybe those ability to create and this willing and wish to create may may somehow come back to you? Yes, yes, I hope. I uh, <laughs> I sleep and I dreams <laughs> and my dreams uh, uh, in my dreams I am uh, I am artist again. <laughs> I'm uh, creative something and uh, I paint. I want this, but I can't. I uh, I went uh, to my table where a lot of uh, colors. Uh, I have a lot of uh, canvas, but it's uh, um, clean canvas and and uh, i i saw for all this and i want to do something but i can't i can't i talk about this with uh, uh, psychologists and uh, uh, i thinking about this a lot of but uh, i understand now uh, i um, i can't create it because uh, uh, i feel pain because uh, i feel war uh, in my uh, heart my uh, husband uh, now in uh, forces of U ukraine my uh, father also uh, he uh, now he uh, in the uh, south of ukraine and uh, it's so hard for me and i can't uh, work uh, uh, with uh, canvas with uh, colors uh, um, because I, I, I'm afraid a little bit uh, because I uh, work uh, from my heart. I work from my heart and uh, I can't imagine how I can, um, how I can to do something when I feel a lot of pain inside. I work with uh, my uh, uh, emotional now and uh, I hope and I wish I uh, start uh, I start and continue my uh, creative in future I hope I just totally understand you because uh, for me personally it's absolutely impossible to create when I feel pain when I feel depression and so when I feel a lack of joy I can only create from the states of joy love uh, from the states yes. of po positive and that, that yeah. that's why I employ a lot of yoga and meditation yeah. to help me so I, I totally understand what you feel uh, does yeah. anyone have some questions to Nina Thank you so much. Uh, two people has questions. Okay. Uh, Roxolana was the first one to raise the hand, please. Uh, I just want to say uh, for Nina, I wish you and I send you a big hug. Because uh, really, I, I totally understand you too. Because before my like performance practice, I draw a lot and uh, I stopped mm -hmm. draw in 2014 and I couldn't draw till now. 
It's true. It's true, uh, Roxana. Because uh, you know, uh, everybody says me, Nina, what happens? Uh, it looks like uh, uh, I am in paradise. I am in beautiful place. Everything is okay. But inside me is war, and uh, it's not possible. Uh, creative. It's not possible. And yeah. I hope it's uh, uh, it's part of our uh, life. You know, it's uh, one only one uh, part in all long way. Yeah. But yes. And in in my experience, it was yeah, I stopped draw, but I uh like I accept my fear and start work with the body. It's a, like a different, but for me, it was a way how to like not close myself totally. But yeah. again. It was my experience, but really send you a big hug, take care, and hopefully, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, we will start drawing. And now, uh, again, again, <laughs> again, yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And the next question was from Joel. Uh, Joel, would you uh, unmute yourself and say, Uh, Joel, please uh, unmute yourself because we cannot hear you. There is a there is a button on the left corner of your screen with the microphone. You need to press it. No, no, you you are still muted. I will I will I will send a message to the chat because uh, maybe I can unmute Joel. No no no. 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 Must do it. I will write his uh, him a message. I also cannot unmute you, Joel. I'm afraid I can click this button that says ask to unmute, but I think that is all I yeah. can post. Maybe you could type your question in the chat if you can't um, if you can't say it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm writing this in the chat. Ah, here we go. Oh, Joel is oh, unmuted. Yeah. Joel, oh, yeah. please speak. Thank you, everybody. My name is Joel Thom, and I am co-director, co-founder of artistsforpeace.org. O-R-G. That's wow. artist. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> I, I know this initiative. This one, is, this is great. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, thank you. I wanted to thank you all because you are you are all so inspiring. And it's such a great inspiration to hear from each one of you. And we are here for Ukraine. Oh, incidentally, when you do artist for peace, it's the number four, not the word for artist for, but it is the number four piece dot org o r g. Yes, yes. And we we invite you all to show your work on artist for peace dot org in every art form from film to painting to textile every every art form to sustainable living to share your experience through your work and we will share your experience and your work with the world that is our goal and so Thank we invite you. we invite you all as a as a blanket invitation we just want to share your work with the world and you you are such an example of courage and vision that you must be seen and i think i think what was said early about not being seen as refugees but be seen as global artists in your time yeah. in our <laughs> so we love you and we are extending our hand across this bridge to our you Ukrainian sisters and brothers, we are with you. We are here for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. And, that, that, that's yeah. great. And uh, my works are already present at the Artists for Peace platform. And yeah. uh, I invite all of you to join this beautiful, wonderful initiative. And th thank you the honor of being with you. And uh, if you would please also send to us your message on how we can better help and serve you to do your work. We would like to know that and we want to be here. We are here for you. So please share your ideas on that. How can how can you help us you with your ideas? Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And today we have one more artist to speak uh, with us. And uh, this artist is Lila Fatsinet, a Kyiv-based artist and graphic designer. And she works in the style of symbolism, realism, and naive art. On the basis of her paintings, she created thematic and associative cards collection Amazing You, which aims to inspire and reveal the, the inner world of a woman through which she undergoes personal and spatial transformation. And Lila graduated from Boychuk Academy in Kyiv, and she is participant of Ukraine. Ukrainian exhibitions and international competitions. Uh, Lilia, please uh, share your story with us. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be on this meeting um, uh, to share my experience uh, during um, this year after war invasion. Um, I left uh, my country with my son to be in safety place, we went to Ireland. Um, and uh, uh, at all I can say that uh, all people in the world help us very much. And it's uh, very good for us um, because they support us in different ways. Uh, and uh, at all, I lived in Ireland in very good place. I have everything I need, uh, but I was very, uh, but I missed my country my friends, my relatives a lot. And um, every time I was uh, thinking about, I want to come back, I want to be in, in my native place where I can create, uh, uh, where I can uh, express uh, myse myself uh, as usually. And um, in Ireland, um, I started to work as a graphic designer. Um, it's uh, like uh, a part of my education. And uh, I can say it's a um, good experience for me to feel that I'm independent and I can, um, uh, I can uh, create my life um, for me and for my son um, to, uh, to be in independent economy at all, because I think it's very important uh, for our country uh, at this time, especially uh, because our country, unfortunately, uh, isn't in independent uh, in, uh, in economy. Um, also, I have uh, experienced, um, I lived in Dublin and during this year, and I took, um, um, a part, uh, I was a participant um, uh, in Ukrainian fair. Um, uh, Ukrainian community in Dublin uh, made uh, such fair uh, for island people to represent our um, art, Ukrainian art, uh, paintings, embroidery, everything, um, uh, for example, uh, traditional uh, Eastern um, uh, food uh, that uh, Ukrainians usually make, um, and um, everything um, about this um, during this year, I created a lot of um, paintings uh, because I um, I felt uh, uh, different um, feelings. Uh, it was uh, something like uh, a depression because of uh, all of this, because of uh, war. I have a lot of hard feelings inside myself and I had to express this. And... Um, uh, I can say that it was a very good uh, period um, 
uh, like uh, for for art expressions, but but very hard at all. And um, uh, now for, uh, I uh, came back to Ukraine, and now I feel that I want to stay here uh, on in Western Ukraine. Um, at all, it's a more safety place for living. Uh, and I feel uh, myself here as I'm at home, I, I'm really at home. Um, it's very important feeling for artists to, to have such place um, because I um, couldn't find this place in Ireland um, because at all um, I have very good um, um, environment, uh, everything, clothes, food, uh, money, because government, Ireland government uh, um, helps a lot uh, with everything. Uh, but I can say that um, here in my native country, I um, feel myself better than anywhere. And um, uh, now I'm happy I'm here. I'm not afraid to be here as, um, uh, as when I came abroad with my son to be in safety place. And um, I'm happy I can share, share my story with you. Maybe you have some questions. Uh, Lila, thank you for your presentation. And does thank anyone has some questions? No, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we are finished today with our presentation. A few people who agreed to participate in this discussion just didn't appear. And also I can understand that because uh, we share today many personal stories, many touching stories, very deep stories, the stories about our pains, challenges, the stories about our suffering, the stories about the war, the, the stories about how our life has changed. And uh, maybe some people are not ready just to speak publicly about this very difficult things but I'm re I really want to thank all of you from the deep from the bottom of my heart uh, for the things that you shared today that you showed that the the thing that you spoke so openly so frankly about the very painful topics and about not only successes and about the faults as well. And I think that there is no faults of during the war. And uh, everything, everything we face, uh, we have enough strength, enough courage to overcome because we stand already for one and a half year and we are a great surprise for all of the world. And I hope we find enough, enough courage as well in our hearts to maintain our our balance to ma maintain ourselves, to help ourselves, to support ourselves, to, su to support our community, to support each other, to become real true friends to each other. And I just want to send a big hug and lots of love to all of you. Thank you for all of us that also you spent the, some time today here with us. And uh, I feel now like the very big feeling of community, the very warm feeling in my heart, the very nice, uh, uh, nice, vulnerable, fragile feeling I just cannot even describe. And uh, I encourage you, uh, all of you also to say a few words of your impressions, or maybe you want to say some finishing lines to this discussion. I now realize, uh, really thank you everyone. Uh, because uh, some thoughts I really can't formulate, but when I heard it, I, I realized that I also feel the same. And uh, what was telling Maria about this uh, syndrome, some <laughs> Yeah, the fraud syndrome, yes. Yeah, that, uh, is it you or is it because you are Ukrainian? Uh, and what I also realize now that all what I am doing now, it's not uh, art, it's not for me, it's not also for Ukrainians, but 
I only think about uh, how I will present it for um, for for the whole world because message I want to share is just uh, like I know it Ukrainians know it but I want the world know uh, also knows it it uh, uh, our culture or it's our pain um, everything so it's like um, the meaning of my art changed I realized it it's now it's not the same as it was and thank you, uh, thank you. I, I i want to say one more thing and maybe olena you can help me with translation because i really don't know how to say it yeah um, i will be happy to yeah uh so how i realize here like ten, two two and a half year out of ukraine i understand how the ukrainian feel this syndrome that you said the syndrome of fraud. Fraud, fraud syndrome. syndrome. It's huge, really. And it's before war too. Because when I can like see artists and live people here, like it's it's not much different than Europe. But again, we are very strong and we're doing such a deep thing our artists, but no one knows about us. This is the main thing here that Ukrainians uh, in, in the, okay, I need a translation. Типу, що уявлення тутешніх людей про Україну – це щось таке, як країна третього світу, і в нас там, не знаю, ми не знаємо, що таке інтернет. So uh, the thing is that the people abroad usually consider Ukraine as a country of the third world, world that we don't even know what internet is. And, and then you just show them the DIA mobile applications and they are like fascinated with it. E, uh, okay, I will continue in English. So, and uh, I knew I knew a lot of Ukrainian artists who are doing such a deep and strong thing and project, and they are not here just because no one knows about us. So, what I understand and learn from this country that we must learn how to advertise ourselves, like not like. Oh, we are so poor. We are from Ukraine. Blah, blah. No, we are strong, and we we must advertise ourselves, and we're doing really powerful things. And you you need to to fix this syndrome inside you. It's very important. Thank you, Roxolana. Um, Thank you. Something for that might story. help, Roxolana, is uh, last year we had. Um, a really professional presentation about social marketing and uh, social media and marketing specifically for artists and it's still online on our YouTube channel um, and there were loads of things that I learned from it so if you're interested in learning more about how to promote yourself I would really recommend having a watch of that. Yeah, yeah, it will be very helpful if you like if it's possible could you please share it somewhere in chat just yeah. to I'll find the link for you now and thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, does uh, anyone else wants to speak? Or uh, this presentation just naturally comes to an end? <laughs> Okay, then again, thank you so much for everyone that you found your time uh, to share the stories. Some of them were compelling, some of them were inspiring, but they were all very alive, very personal, uh, very deep. And uh, I'm happy we were here all together today. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you so Thank you. much, Elena, for organizing this event. I think it's really important for the world to hear these stories. Um, and I'm really pleased that we can provide some form of a platform on which you can do that. Um, and just to reiterate what Joel was saying, if there's anything else that we can do other than provide this space, then um, just let us know and we will we will jump right on it. Anything that we can do to support you all. Um, thank you all so much for giving up your time and energy this evening and sharing such personal stories with us. I know that um, for myself, when I'm talking about my practice and challenges, it, it can be really emotional. It can be really tough. So I really appreciate everything that you've given tonight. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Sarah Jane, for hosting us today. And uh, big thanks to Lacuna Festival that uh, for all of us, it's very important that you are interested in hosting of such kind events. And that's very valuable of how deeply you understand the importance of these sayings, of these stories that have been told today. And uh, that's uh, I, we all really appreciate this very, very highly. Thank you.